Hey guys, welcome back to Vito's Garage. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Today's gonna be a really, really big project. We, uh, project, project. <laughs> we have to replace this water pump, all right? At the same time, I'm gonna replace the radiator hoses, a bunch of other stuff related to cooling system like thermostat, and um, we'll see what else needs to be replaced. But mainly I'm replacing this water pump. There's nothing wrong with the original water pump, actually. It's still original water pump on this car, but there's nothing wrong with it. However, I just wanna replace it as a preventive maintenance. For the next owner so it's gonna be a nice uh, brand new water pump and what i did is i also painted this thing with high heat paint uh silver paint so that way it's gonna stay amazing it's not gonna corrode because if you just put the regular you know regular water pump on it's gonna corrode eventually and it's gonna look ugly but this one's gonna stay amazing for a long long time So the water pump on this M103 engine is not a huge deal to replace. It's just um, a little bit uh, time consuming. But uh, as you can see, there's one, two, three, and four bolts holding it to the block. Uh, so it sits right there. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and replace that. So I'll show you basically step-by-step step on how to do it. And so that way you guys can go ahead and take care of yours as well. So first things first is we're gonna take the fan clutch. We're gonna uh, take the fan shroud belt hoses but the first first thing is i want to take the belt off i want to loosen the belt so before you turn this tensioner uh you have to there's a bolt literally right there there's a 19 millimeter you have to loosen first and then you can turn it counterclockwise this one and then that will loosen the belt you can take the belt off i need to take the belt off before doing anything i'm also going to take this hose off right here i might actually change it we'll see but i'm just gonna take this one off and you have to be careful because this is a plastic fitting don't break that when you take the hose off it's gonna be some coolant but that's okay so in my case i'm just gonna make it easier for myself i'm gonna remove um there was a zip tie here Take that off it's supposed to be a clip like that so we're going to take this clip off move the fan shroud to the side uh, and then maybe i can actually get more better access to that 19 millimeter bolt to loosen the belt so we're gonna see now we can move this see this wasn't installed properly so it got like this has to go into that slot and now it's kind of broken that. all right so here's the tool i had to actually trim the tool a little bit it was not fitting the right way but now i got that eight millimeter right there ready to loosen this fan clutch and take it out all right and i just loosened the fan clutch bolt counterclockwise all right bolt it is out be really careful we're gonna take out together the the, the whole thing the fan shroud and clutch Carefully wiggle it off, and we're gonna pull this bad boy out like so. Okay, all right, this is out, and we can clean all this up nicely as well at the same time. Okay, and we're gonna pull this fan shroud carefully and just. Cooling the hose a little bit in the way. Come on. Okay. Let's see. Alternator. There it is, almost out. Come on. Like so. There you go. There's our fan shroud. All right. Now. This is where that tool goes once again, right over there. 
into the slot. Okay. All right, so I'm just checking some pulleys here and there. Not too bad. This one has noise. Alternator, not too bad, pretty good. Oh yeah, this one needs to be replaced for sure. I think that's the, is that for the tensioner? Probably. Crankshift is okay. Power steering, pump. Okay, well, let's get to this water pump. I'm gonna disconnect this line right here. And what else we're gonna do? I'm gonna disconnect this pulley. The water pump itself is fine. Doesn't I mean maybe it has a little bit of play, but yeah, I'm gonna just change it. Ready to pull this upper radiator hose on um, this thermostat housing. If you have a plastic one, replace it with a metal one. And this one, I'm gonna clean it up and paint it with high heat paint, actually. Yeah, and then. Let's go ahead and take this off of the radiator. Any open, any openings in the cooling system, make sure you cover it up. And this one's actually really cool. Look, it has like a like a metal reinforcement. And I'm pretty sure this radiator has been replaced at some point before. So that is really, really cool. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of cleanup here on this car. Some more coolant. And these are original radiator hoses. They're getting replaced. Okay, pan is still underneath. It's gonna drain out quite a bit. So. And honestly saying this job is not really that difficult, just a little time consuming. So I'm pretty happy that I'm doing this and I'm gonna order some of the these idler, this idler pulley as well and probably this tensioner pull is pretty bad, so gotta do that. So this is the tool to loosen the fan clutch. And as you can see, I had to just cut a little bit off of the tip because it would not fit in there. And this particular tool, tool I had to order it from Pelican Parts. So it was a while back, but you know, after trimming the tool, it actually worked out quite a bit well. And then some people actually use just regular Allen keys to you know hold this pulley from turning you could do that as well so i forgot to mention that it's a pretty good idea to loosen the water pump pulley when the belt is still on and i did make a mistake on that so i'm gonna have to figure out how to remove those 13 millimeter bolts holding the pulley in place yeah make sure you do that also also removing these 10 millimeter bolts on the thermostat housing gotta be really careful don't break them you have to go back and forth So I'm probably gonna end up replacing this belt anyways, but I'm using my shoulder to hold the pulley from spinning using a belt and I'm loosening the bolts that way. After three bolts are out, you can just wiggle this off. This is why you use copper paste. So this thing does not rust in. All right, so now I'm working on this pipe. There's five millimeter Allen bolt holding it, clamp, and 10 millimeter bolt right here. So I'm gonna take those out. And this pipe, I'm, uh, this pipe is gonna get sanded and I'm probably gonna paint it in like gold color. It used to be gold from the factory. I'm now just taking off this pulley. There it is, and it's got the washer in the back too. Okay, it's gotta replace this guy. This was already replaced, looks like. I N A. Maybe just gotta like open this up a little and put more grease in there. I'll, I'll see. Got this bolt loose, six millimeter Allen. Gonna take this guy out.
This is actually, I was wrong, it's not a washer. It's part of the pulley. Unfortunately, but I have to take this tensioner out and this bracket right here. I have to remove this power steering pulley to get to that bolt on the bottom. And I might have to remove this uh, fan clutch pulley right here to get to that bolt. So, <laughs> so I have to use the same method I showed you before to loosen this. And the best thing is to loosen while the belt is still on the car. So yeah, it just kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Pulley. So this is the bolt that was hidden because of that pulley. So I'm gonna loosen it. As you can see, the power steering pump just kind of moves out of the way a little bit because that's what you want. You're gonna need more space to remove this water pump. So I remove that 10 millimeter bolt. Okay, it's all loosened up here. So I'm gonna pull this pipe out. It's gonna be more coolant coming out. Just like that. All right. Cool. Let it drain. All right, so also have to take this guy out. This fin clutch pulley bearing bracket. Okay, there it is. It's the pulley just to get to that little crazy bolt. So it's the bracket. Finally, it's out. I can clean it up nicely now. Pretty dirty and sludged up. So, and then I can take this uh, tensioner assembly out of here. It's going to give me a lot more access to the water pump now. Here's the tensioner assembly. It's still all good, all working, and everything. It's just going to need. It just needs to be cleaned up. This rod is just a little bit bent, unfortunately, because people don't know how to tighten the belt properly. You have to loosen this belt or this bolt first before you turn that rod. Yeah, but other than that, she's she's all right. It's good. It just needs to be cleaned up. That's what uh, everything looks like here. All right, guys, what else I can say? Well, a bunch of stuff is apart here, but... We are ready to remove this water pump. This little hose is gonna get replaced too. I already loosened it. Yeah, there's just two Allen bolts, top bottom, and then on the other side, they're a little harder to get to. Um, so I might have to loosen this dipstick a little out of the way. We'll see. But there are two other bolts, and I think those are hex on this side. On this side, those two are Allen. And that, I don't know if I showed you guys, but the interior is very nice, beautiful did all the detailing on it and oh my gosh i'm scared to even sit in it now <laughs> that's how clean this thing is now amazing so i think what happened is i'm seeing this as the hex and then the rest of the bolts are actually 13 millimeters so somebody probably maybe this bar pump was replaced before i'm not sure but it's whatever long story short uh somebody's been here and they probably lost the bolt and replaced it with this allen bolt on top because the rest of them are actually regular hex so it is what it is it's okay but good thing we're doing it because this hose is also in a really bad shape i have to replace it it's pretty hard as well and it's it's just getting really like bad and uh there's some corrosion needs to be cleaned up as well so the hardest bolt is that top right. So I loosened the dipstick. There was another 13 millimeter bolt. And I moved this bracket out of the way. And I positioned the wrench right over there on that bolt. And I'm gonna loosen it up. The rest of the bolts are out. And uh, the water pump is almost out, guys. So it's a big pain with that bolt. But I actually decided to use the swivel. So I'm just slowly working that bolt out of there. It's almost out. All right, a lot more coolant just came out. Wow, look at this, that's crazy. 
So, got quite a bit of like rust right here. So I'm gonna have to, this is literally like orange rust and coolant, you know? I'm gonna have to sand all this really good and clean this up, especially this really calm. I have to sand this down. That's where the hose goes. And at the same time, I'll just clean everything nicely here. See? Awesome. So I put this glove in there so nothing falls in there. I just got like a fine grid sandpaper and I'm cleaning all this mating surface really good. Making sure it's gonna be all amazing. Also spending time cleaning the oil sludge here and there, making it nice. This timing cover as well. Yeah, amazing. It's gonna be a lot cleaner once I'm done. All right, I spent quite a bit of time cleaning here, a bunch of stuff. It's not perfect, but it's a lot, lot nicer. And I'm done. Uh, sanding this surface area right here also this now you need to pay attention to something there's uh, since i took out the water pump there was some coolant that spilled out still um, so these two ports are filled with coolant where the threads are for the bolts so you need to go ahead and grab like a screwdriver and have a rag on it and just kind of take all that stuff out or just you know put something in there like a vacuum pump and pump it out make sure that all those bolt holes are free of any liquids all right everything is basically ready to go here surface is all smooth and great everything here this side is good now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put a silicone paste right here just a little bit around here that way the surface is not gonna corrode in the future same thing right here i'm going to put some silicone paste on it not the sealant but the paste i'm going to put it around that way it's going to have no chance to rust even more and then i'm going to add some copper paste to the bolt holes okay it's not really necessary but i'll just i like doing it there's the silicone paste i'm using and i already put it on the surface right here and right there I'm gonna use it with the o-rings as well i'm getting i'm prepping the water pump right now for the installation so the main water pump uh, o-ring gasket so originally right there there's the number for it and it looks like this it's gonna go right there but first i'm gonna install it on the water pump i'm gonna use a little bit of silicone paste on it as well this is the hose that you also need it's just a short hose that's gonna go right on here. This guy. All right, guys, new water pump is ready to go on. This is that short hose you have to install. Don't forget your clamps as well. And there's a new O-ring right there as well. As soon as you install this hose and all the clamps and everything, it's just the water pump is just gonna kind of sit there. It's not gonna. It's gonna basically help you. This, this is going to help you install these uh, bolts. And yeah, there's also a guide pin that this water pump has on the bottom right there. So there's no way you're going to install it the wrong way. When tightening the bolts, do not go crazy. And tighten them crisscross. So tighten this one. Then move on to the upper. And yeah, go ahead and do the German tight. So it's already like pretty dark, but I just want to finish today. I just want to finish installing the water pump. I still have a bunch of parts to clean and whatnot. So I'm still going to be pretty busy. But today, tonight, I, need, I just want to install this water pump, bolt it all up. And um, yeah, that's basically my goal for tonight. All right, water pump is installed. Bolts are tightened. This hose is tightened too. And... Uh, I'm about to install what the things to watch out is this um, crankshaft sensor wiring make sure when you install the water pump that it can still move and it's not pinched that's really important and then yeah 
This is awesome. All right, so while I'm here, I'm also gonna take the opportunity to blow out this radiator with a hose. All right, so just wanna do that. Pretty sure it's not clogged, but it's a good idea since I'm already here to do it. Really, really good idea. Good idea to actually open it up and open it like that just to see if there's any junk between the condenser and the actual radiator. All of it is gonna get cleaned up now. This is how you install the tensioner assembly back together. The bracket, rear bracket, tensioner itself, tensioner rod. Yeah. This is, have some patience with this. This is gonna be a pain. So don't forget that you have to run this bracket underneath, right here underneath of the crank sensor wire. And uh, if you can't align anything here, then you can try to move this rod even one way or the other way. So it will help you align this stuff. It's a bit of a pain, it requires patience. Alright, so I'll show you which bolts are tight. This is tight. Then this bolt right here is tight. And this bottom right here is tight. And also on this side, there's this bolt right here that's tight. And that's it. Now, this 19 millimeter, you can leave it uh, loose because you're still going to have to adjust the uh, belt tension. So... But now we can start installing this pulley, water pump pulley, and this pulley. So this uh, fan clutch bearing bracket pulley has this washer. Make sure you reinstall it as well. It goes on the front side. Add a little bit of copper paste on these before we install these pulleys. I'm also using this tool to hold it in place while I install the bolts. Here's the coolant line. It's got a brand new O-ring that I lubricated with um, silicone paste. Also put some silicone paste right here where the hose is gonna go on. And now I can go ahead and reinstall it. And yeah, just so you know, I sanded this and uh, painted it with high heat paint. So it's gonna look really nice and it's gonna get protected. It's gonna look awesome. From the factory, this part is actually like uh gold so but i don't have a gold paint right now and i just decided to you know go ahead and paint it with silver still gonna look really good all right so make sure it goes underneath that bolt that bolt does not have to actually come out just to get loosened there we go just turn it slightly look at that amazing now i can put this little Tiny bolt wherever it's at, right here. It's gonna go right over there. This little guy, the little guy. Oh my gosh, look how nice this thing is now. Wow, amazing. Don't over tighten this bolt, just carefully snug it. After you tighten that holding retainer bolt, go ahead and install the coolant hose. Like so, and I'm gonna tighten this bad boy. I also just installed the water pump pulley right here. So I'll connect it. All right, so what I'm doing is just an extra stuff. Um, I'm just gonna add a 
bunch more grease inside. I took out the seals and everything. I'm gonna add a bunch more grease and reinstall the seals back onto the pulley. I'm gonna do the same with the other pulley. That way it will last a long, long time. As you can see, there's still grease in there, but it's not so, so much. So I wanna add a lot more. So much better now. All right, guys, today's the next day. I'm gonna be wrapping up the water pump job and everything. I have a brand new thermostat. And as you can see, I painted this um, thermostat housing to make it nice, as you can see. So I used the high heat paint and it's not gonna corrode in the future. As far as the, th as far as the thermostat, I used 87 degree Celsius thermostat. Very important that I use the 80 degree thermostat because it's gonna be undercooled. So also got brand new hose right here this one's gonna go from the valve cover to the intake manifold got brand new hoses uh radio hoses brand new radio cap uh pulleys and i also added a bunch of a bunch of extra grease to these pulleys one is gonna go onto the tensioner the other one's gonna be the idler pulley right here slowly but surely we are we are getting ready to get this thing back on the road so now I'm going to be using the uh, this coolant and I have to add water to it. So I have distilled water. I'm going to mix 50-50 with both. And uh, yeah, we're going to put it into the engine. I'm using a separate uh, jog for this. When it hits the middle, right about there, I'm going to put the rest uh, from that bottle. So I added a little bit of coolant through the water pump right now. That way I can actually see if anything is leaking, you know. It's a good idea to do that. But I didn't put it all the way because this hose is not attached yet. Installing this idler pulley onto the tensioner. Perfect. Make sure they all spin. It's so nice. I added so much grease to these pulleys now and they're all like super quiet. That's awesome. So here's the new thermostat made in Germany. I'm going to be installing that, but when I install it and when I put this housing on, I'm going to add just a little bit of sealant because as you can see, this is like pitted. So I want to eliminate any possibility of a leak. So I'll just add a little bit and wait overnight for the sealant to completely, you know, dry up. And then I'll be adding coolant afterwards. So first you're going to install the thermostat. Like that. And then you're going to put the seal. As you can see, the seal is slightly too big, but they also provided a second seal, which I just had somewhere. So they did provide two seals. One is thicker, one is thinner. So I'm gonna use the thinner one. Maybe the thicker one works on like plastic housings better. I don't know, but here's that. And I use the tool to push the seal down like so. Okay. Here's the housing, and I just put just a little bit right there around. Just put some sealant, and now we can go ahead and install it. Every bolt for the thermostat housing gets copper paste. Don't go too crazy on these bolts. Just see when the two housings, two halves come together and just kind of snug them up a little more. Not too much. Okay, now we are installing this guy. Brand new hose. You can also install new belt. Deco brand, okay. So now the belt is on, you're gonna start tightening. This is kind of the routing, how it goes. You're gonna start tightening this 13 millimeter nut.
clockwise, it's gonna start tightening the belt at the same time. Well, bad news, I had to disassemble the whole thing again, especially the tensioner because the tensioner rod was bent initially. And now, as you can see, I got a new one. So I'm gonna install this one. I'm gonna put a lot of lube in there. Problem is that this old one, like it was getting stripped so I couldn't tighten the belt. So that's that was the problem with this guy. Yep, so I'm gonna go ahead and install the new one on. That's what it is, sometimes you have to redo the stuff, but it's, it has to get done right. All right, now I'm tightening the belt with a brand new tensioner rod. It's amazing, it's already super tight. Before that, I could not get this thing to get tight at all. It was crazy. This is this rod right here. It's just pretty stripped because people don't know how to actually tension the belt properly. You have to loosen this 19 millimeter bolt first before you turn that rod. And that's what happens, the rod gets just damaged. Once you're done tightening the belt, then go ahead and uh, tighten this 19 millimeter bolt all the way for the tensioner. And that's all. Now I'm ready to install two brand new Phoebe uh, radiator hoses. So I'm not gonna run it for too long. There's still no coolant in it, but she hasn't run for a long time, probably over a month now. Just wanna make sure that she's got no valve cover leaks anymore. Amazing machine. All right, I'm about to start pouring coolant in. Checking for leaks and whatnot. All right, the coolant is in. I've got a brand new radio cap as well. Not radio, but coolant expansion cap. Only the best. The Deutsche Das Auto Volkswagen. Just kidding. Okay, so that that's the original one. Still good, so I'll save that. And then this one. Uh, this is the cover for the distributor cap. I just, you know, just in case I added uh, some zip ties to it. I'm about to cut off the tips right here, so it looks uh, good. And everything looks just so beautiful here. I'm so happy. This thing is amazing. Wow. So much work has been done to this car. been running for like 10 minutes now temperature is good and everything amazing pretty cold today 